And welcome to the Super Fantastic Exchange, where we have an inspired conversations with leaders, thinkers, and motivators. And today I've got an incredible guest, someone that I, he just inspires me every time I'm around him. I just feel elevated and lifted. So I can't wait to introduce to you the none other, Jamal Isom. Y'all give it up for Jamal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jamal, you hear your fan club clapping? It's pretty yeah. impressive, man. Very wow. humbling. <laughs> you you've got the you've got the fan club going, man. They need to simmer down just <laughs> I love it. That is that is pretty that's inspiring having those people clap for you, man. Right? Thank you, sir. Yeah, yes, yes. I love it. I love <laughs> that's it. That's awesome. Well, Jamal, thank you so much for joining us today on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Before we get started, I want to give you a chance to share a little bit more about who you are and what you do. Okay. Well, I'm Jamal, and I am from South Arlington, Texas. That's where I grew up. I have two kids, five and a three-year-old, two boys. I have an amazing wife. We've been married. Well, February will be our fifth year of marriage. Yes, February 28th is the day. I celebrated my fifth year of sobriety two days ago. Praise God. And I am in marketing, digital marketing, social media torch and rookie. So social media torch is the marketing side of it that helps build your brand. It helps. It's going to help build your social media influence. It's going to give you a chance to have ads on Google, Facebook. So if you want to build your business that way and generate leads. So we do lead gen also. And then this, this hat you see here, this is Rookie. This is what I mainly do. I'm a sales manager mainly for Rookie. I just do social media torch, kind of cross-selling, whatever my boss needs me to. But this is what I mainly do. And we're a CRM, soft, AI software company. We help streamline processes and we help you manage your, your relationships with your customers. And it, it, uh, that kind of actually helps you generate leads. And if you're in charge of a team, our system can help you stay connected with your team and help you kind of interact with them and stay interactive with them in case you're out of the office. And then we have our missed call text back, Gary, you know all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just helps you to never miss out on a business call. So that's, that's what we do. That's fantastic. You've got, sounds like you've got a lot on your plate and I love that you're so like invested in, uh, you know, what you're doing for the company that you work with. And I, and I'm just, I admire that. It's one of the many things that I admire about you, Jamal, but you know what, like I mentioned, every time I'm around you, I just feel like my, my spirit is elevated. My spirit is just kind of inspired. And so that kind of leader to me, deserves a conversation. And I love to peek behind the curtain to find out what inspires that kind of inspiring leader. And so Jamal, I reached out to you and I asked you, I was like, hey, what inspires you? What is it that that just kind of gets you going? You came back with three incredible points and I can't wait to kind of dive into these with you. The first one you talked about, what inspires you is greatness. Now that's that's a big word. And so I can't wait for you to kind of unpack that and let us know what is what does greatness mean to you and why does that inspire you? Well, greatness just means to me the work ethic people put in, the the humility and accountability people have, the the will to succeed. And when I see people just do certain things that it's it's like, man, like I want to be that. It's like that scene. <laughs> I think it's the pursuit of happiness with Will Smith. He walks by the Ferrari or whatever, Lamborghini. I can't remember what car it was. And he like looks at the guy. He says, what do I have to do to get that? <laughs> and a lot of times, because I know our pastor talks about it, that greatness will do give you one of three responses. It'll give you, some will be inspired by your greatness. Mm -hmm. Some will be intimidated by your greatness. Or some will be jealous about your greatness. And I just, I know my shortcomings and I know my weaknesses. So I don't get jealous because like it's like I know I know what I'm capable of, but I know what I'm not capable of. So if I see greatness, I'm like, man, that's awesome. I want like how do I how do I get some of that? <laughs> how can I drink from that cup? You know what I'm saying? And it's just I just I've always wanted to be great. And so I don't I don't begrudge people to that. I just, I want to learn. I'm a life I'm a lifelong learner and the Bible talks about that. The wise will hear and increase their learning. And so I really want to always be someone that learns from others' greatness. Oh, that is so good. And and Jamal, for me, what what really kind of the underlining theme for that, what kind of resonates for me is the awareness. And what what greatness is able to to see greatness in other people. 
And so what I'm loving from you is you talked about like work ethic and the pursuit and a lifelong learner, but you have that awareness where you see other people in their greatness doing these things. And you're like, I, w- I want to surround myself with that kind of greatness. I want to learn from that kind of greatness because you have that awareness and you pursue it uh, each and every day. And that's just, that's incredible. And I think that is absolutely inspiring because I imagine a lot of people, well, a lot of us will just be like, no, I'm good. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm comfortable here, but here you are, you're, you're finding greatness. You're getting close to it. You're learning from it and you're pursuing it. And that's incredible. That is, that's truly inspiring there, Jamal. Thank you. Yeah. I'm a big, huge Tom Brady fan. And I heard him. I know I'm probably gonna get some backlash for that, but I love Tom Brady. I I used to not like Tom Brady, but then when I read his book and then I, I kind of saw how he operates behind the scenes, like he told a story that when he first got drafted, he only got one rep of practice, like one, and he was frustrated because how how can I get how can I get playing time if I'm only getting one rep? But somebody gave him some knowledge. He said, "Well, just just treat that one rep like it's the best thing ever in life." And so my, or sorry, so Tom Brady would go out and he would treat that one rep like like a game, like a game situation. And then something else that really stood out to me about his, about who he is, Bill Belichick talked about in this book I read that the reason why they drafted Tom Brady is because he performed better in hostile situations. So the 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 more the situation demanded his greatness, he rose to the occasion every time. And I'm like, I, I want some of that. Like that's that's a gift <laughs> that you're. You're, you rise to occasions where the situation requires it. And so yeah. I, I just, I'll never understand the, why, why the, the people hate on Tom Brady so much. It's like, man, like, I want that. He, he'll yeah. sit there and stay behind in the facility after practice till 4 a.m. watching film all day. They have to kick him out because, like, dude, you need to go home. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that level of greatness inspires me. It's like, man, that's the kind of work I need to be putting in. Yeah. And, and and I love, again, that just kind of goes back to the awareness piece in my perspective, Jamal, is you just, you greatness recognizes greatness. And I love that you're just, you're pursuing that. And that, that mm-hmm. is so amazing. So Jamal, the second thing you talked about that inspires you, um, which, which I, which inspires me as well is evangelism. And I, you know, I imagine there's some, some different connotations about what evangelism means to some people. But I want to hear from you what it is that evangelism is for you and why is it that that inspires you? Okay, because I, I have it on my heart. I really want to do full-time ministry and start my own church. That's a goal of mine. And the Lord put that on my heart. And so I, I, I watch a lot of pastors on YouTube. And this one guy really stood after his name, Richard Lorenzo Jr. And he goes out, God gives him a word. And the first time I saw this guy, he goes to the mall and he seeks out this girl. Like he has no idea who she is. So he just walks in and he just starts telling her like who she is, like God, God's calling you, like you deal with a lot of anxiety and depression. God wants to heal. I'm just like, whoa, it's 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 one of those moments like like now, now mind you, they don't know each other. So he's just giving this girl words of knowledge. And then he she ends up like telling him, OK, yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. And it just amazes me. It's like, man, how do you know that? And that's like the Holy Spirit's telling him my wife had to tell me this. She's like, the Holy Spirit's telling him what to say to this girl in the moment. And she ends up getting healed. He prays for her. She ends up getting healed and set free for whatever bondage she was in. I'm, and like, this, this guy does this regularly. He just goes out to malls and just speaks to strange people, gives them a word from the Holy Spirit, and they get healed like right on camera. I'm just like, that's inspirational to me because I want to do that. I want to be used like a vessel for the Lord. He just sends me out to some strange person that's lost. And then I got a word for him or her. And they get healed right before my eyes and God does a good work. And I'm like, that's just so inspirational to me. That that's, that's unbelievable. And and I absolutely agree. I think, you know, speaking life into other people is such a, a powerful tool from, from God that you, you know, when you're still and you can hear the word of God and the Holy spirit comes in and, and kind of orders your steps to connect with, that lost sheep or that, you know, the, the one from the 99 and share a word. That's, that's unbelievable. That's, that's incredible. And I love that you've, you've, you have the awareness again, kind of goes back to the awareness 
that God's put that on your heart to do that. And, and, and I know, and I've seen you do some things behind the scenes to kind of build that, I guess that muscle, if you will, you're doing yeah. reps, you're, you're kind of into the word, you're, you're, you're surrounding yourself with the right people in the right place at the right time so that you can grow. And, and I can't wait for, for you to, to, to do what God's put on your heart. Thank you. Yeah, I've had a few divine appointments, man. Divine appointments are, are are amazing. The God tells you like, hey, go pray for this person or hey, this person needs you to just bless them. And I've had a couple of those. And I know James Honeycutt's told me a couple of times, like, because I, I, I was in a season of a, a little bit of discouragement. He's like, you need to find out what fills your cup. And man, I'll tell you, divine appointments, God sending you somewhere for an appointment, like those really fill my cup. So yeah, evangelism is very inspiring, man, just to see someone get set free right before your eyes. I've always said this to people I, uh, I talk to. It's one thing to read the Bible, but mm -hmm. to, live it, it, to live it is something totally different. To see things happen, a miracle happen right before your eyes, it's like, I, I want more of these. <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. And and to, to make that happen, it, it it requires obedience to the word of God and, you know, and just really, Hey, he's put this on my heart and he's kind of talking to me. He's nudging me, but if I'm not obedient to do these things, they can't happen. 100%. Yeah. That's so awesome. Jamal, I just, I'm loving this conversation. It's so, so good. Thank you. The, the third thing that you shared with me, and I can't wait to hear this testimonies, testimonies inspire you. So tell me what that means. Why, why testimonies inspire you? Well, because I know some Christians, I, 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 me, me personally, had those moments and those seasons, like I just said earlier, about discouragement. And you're like, get this thought of, God, I see this person over here. And did you forget about me? Like, they're prospering. God, what about me? Like, why why am I having to struggle? God, all these people over here getting blessed. God, did you forget about me? And then you hear someone that has a similar story that you have. I'll give you an example. I, not, obviously not for me, but this some lady I heard in our prayer meeting. She has a husband that was going through alcoholism and they're praying for pregnancy. And she had been praying and praying and praying for her husband and for a baby. And not only did God come through and heal her husband and get him in church, like after her husband gave his life to Christ, she got pregnant. <laughs> like, <laughs> see, like, that, like testimonies like that, because when you hear those stories of, from people, it's like, okay, that if, it, if God can do that for this family, I know my my time's coming. Sure. And it, yeah, and it, it's just to to hear people go through things and go through trials, and to hear them finally hit the the cherry on the icing with what God did. It's it's like, man, okay, you know what? I need to apologize to God. Okay, God, it's your timing. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sorry for being impatient. Please forgive me. I know a breakthrough's coming. So whatever you have for God, you know the plans and thoughts. It's not for disaster to give me a future and a hope. So I'm away. <laughs> Oh my gosh. And that is so true. I believe, I believe the testimonies that we hear, they're not coincidences. Those are though truly things that that God orders and, and makes happen. And that restores our hope when we see those those are and hear those testimonies. And as as our pastor shares, it's our faith that is the action part of our hope that keeps us in line and obedient to God's word so that we can create our own testimony through God's goodness. And I, and I love that you're, again, for me, Jamal, it's this, this awareness that you have that you're, you're listening to these testimonies and you're like, man, this is restoring my hope and, and, you know, it's going to fuel my faith. So I'll continue to walk. Um, and, and I love that that's part of who you are and, and what you're able to kind of kind of pull from everything that's that's around you and inspires you yeah it's good man i love hearing testimonies i could listen to them all day <laughs> oh the stories and then that's that's and i truly believe you know this the super fantastic exchange is is a component of hearing testimonies from different people because the things that inspire people are truly are testimonies for other people to hear as well and i love that you're being able to add to this, your testimony, your awareness, all the things that you believe in are testimonies that will inspire other people down the line. And Jamal, it's been so great. I always love chatting with you. We've met, we we're right here at the end of our time, but before we wrap up, I want to give you a chance to share a closing thought with us. 
Oh, that's good. Well, uh, one of my favorite quotes. Can I share a quote? Is that okay? Please, yes. Okay. Uh, you know? Do you know John Eldridge? No, I'm not familiar. Okay, he's a pa he's a pastor. He he wrote a book called Wild at Heart, and then I think it's the War, War in Your in Your Heart, and he teaches the what's going on in man's heart, like why man struggles sometimes with things in their heart when they don't have Jesus. And then a, the other book he talks about warring su and supernaturally because obviously we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So he wrote a book about spiritual spiritual warfare. And one of the quotes he said in Wild at Heart, man, it stuck with me. The, it will stick with me the rest of my life. And so he, he talks about when you feed, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day, but you teach him how to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. So he has his own quote. We correlate this with God. He says, if you teach a man a rule, you'll help him solve his problem. But if you teach a man how to walk with God, you'll help him solve the rest of his life. And I was like, oh, but that's, that's, uh, that, that quote is so amazing. I just want to leave people with that, like, Learn to walk with God. You'll see the amazing things he'll do in your life. You never know what, what what's coming. Clearly, it, you're going to live in a, a like in a place of unknown because God's not going to explain. He'll sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. But it's not our place to understand. So just trust in God. Know that He has a great plan for your life, and see where He takes you. Amen. I love it, Jamal. It is amazing to talk talk to you. And again, just having this moment with you, you've lifted my spirits. Like I feel inspired. Just just being in your presence because you are that that kind of person. And I just, I love being around you. So Jamal, thank you so much for being a, a guest here on the Super Fantastic Exchange. Thank you guys for joining us. Please make sure you go create your Super Fantastic and continue to inspire others. And we will see you on the next episode.